For many years, people wondered why I hadn't actually built a guitar. The combination of me being a concert level guitarist and a very experienced furniture builder made it seem like a natural for me to build guitars. For years, I resisted because I knew that just having woodworking skills and guitar skills did not guarantee anything. Then all of a sudden, I had a change of heart. I think I started to have a feeling of, uh, uh, well, I wanted to have a legacy. The qualities that make for a good guitar are very similar to the qualities that make for a very good sounding drum. You have to have a very solid exterior rim and then you have to have a membrane that will reverberate really well. And when you build a guitar, you're essentially doing the same thing. You're building a drum with strings on it. I do several things almost simultaneously and they come together at the same time. While I begin bending the sides, I start working on the various details of the soundboard. For example, the rosette. I have always loved the furniture and architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright, as well as the Green and Green Brothers. And this is sort of me uh, paying homage to them. The process that everybody comes up with after X number of guitars is unique. And that process is a combination of experience and the personality of the builder. As you can see, I've signed my name here and I've printed my name backwards so that if you look inside with a mirror, you can see my name and the number. things that seem purely decorative are actually quite functional. I routed channels that this uh, rosewood and veneer binding will fit into. This does a couple things. The wood has pores along this edge. Those pores are where the tree draws in nutrients and, and water. Those ends must be sealed in order to keep the soundboard from absorbing and losing moisture too rapidly. This is something that uh, I do very painstakingly because you just have to do it right. There's just no way around it. And you can't really fix problems. You basically would just have to redo it. I've done it. I've had to redo it. I have prepared the neck stock and I've done what's called a mortise and tenon. The tenon is the thing that inserts into what's called the mortise. It's not a quick way of doing it. In fact, it's very painstaking. I do this joint because it has just a certain extra level of control. French polish is basically shellac flakes that are dissolved in alcohol that are applied in small amounts and rubbed continuously until the appropriate level of finish is achieved. The plus on French polish is that it's a very beautiful, warm, but still shiny surface that brings out the richness and colors of the wood. The, the downside is that it's very fragile. Basically, as soon as you sweat, when you play a guitar that's finished in French polish, you've ruined the finish. For example, the guitar I've been concertizing on, the first concert I played, the lights on the stage were just broiling hot, and I just ruined the finish. 
So I got one concert out of it, and I had to come back and refinish it. Every guitar builder that I knew who I felt was a top-notch builder, there was one aspect of their building that they could not control. That aspect was the part of their instruments that reflects who they are as a person. Now the irony is I can hear a Gilbert and I know, oh, that's a John Gilbert guitar. I can hear a Ramirez and I go, oh, that's a Ramirez guitar. But John Gilbert probably can't hear that aspect of his guitars the way other people can. I like the sound of my guitars. I can hear it does this and it does that. It's got good volume, good tone, and this and that. But what makes it sound like a Jack Sanders guitar? I can't hear that. It's a funny catch-22 that the thing I was interested in, in terms of building guitars, is going to be impossible for me to ever hear.